Absolutely, Mike. And, you know, and to have uh, all the pre-planning that they probably had, had thought about this happening before and to be able to get the animal into, the, into a crate and then you see them carrying that deer up to almost look like a, uh, an animal ambulance, probably a vehicle from the Animal Rescue League, to go back and have this, have this deer looked at by a, veter you know, by a veterinarian to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the deer. Uh, just an unbelievable, uh, you know, you talk about a mutual aid response between animal rescue, Waltham Fire Department, Waltham uh, Police. And, you know, we saw them, I mean, they're putting their life on the line to save this deer. And it's just, it's just amazing, you know, because we saw the area where this deer was. And it was a long way. They walked a long way after rescuing that deer to bring it to shore that uh, where we see just happened just moments ago. Uh, and it looks like they probably did tranquilize that uh, the deer. Right. We were talking about that, uh, but, you know, the Animal Rescue League. But if I'm the fire incident commander, I'm saying, what do you think? You're the animal experts here. What do we need to do to facilitate that deer? And there we see that deer right in the very beginning. And, and let's talk about that as we begin to first cover this. And again, let's keep in mind, there's another deer out on that ice. So we're going to have to do this all over again. Uh, Mike, and there was the deer. Such a lonely picture there. Mm. Uh, it's good to know where we are now, and that deer is safe and sound uh, with animal control and vets making sure the deer is okay. But, and to your point, when the rescuers first got to this deer, uh, it was sad to watch because the deer obviously stressed, panicked, could have been hurting itself as, as the deer was thrashing around, hitting its head on some pretty hard ice. Exactly, and, uh, and maybe that's when they came to the decision uh, if they did because uh, the deer calmed down so much to go ahead and uh, use some kind of tranquilizer on the deer just to make sure that it didn't hurt itself and it didn't hurt the rescuers because they had a long way that we saw back to the shore, back to one point where they went ahead and uh, decided they were going to go ahead and have a longer rescue line from the mainland and tow that deer with the two rescuers on board and the two out in front pulling the package across that frozen ice and then going to another line back over to where we saw that deer put into uh, it looks like the wooden crate and then into uh, the vehicle for the animal rescue. And, and there's the scene again. I, I use the big, but it's the great reference point is the Bambi. Uh, cartoon yeah. Disney show because that's basically what we're watching here it is. a deer that can't get its hooves any kind of traction and that's what you're seeing here could have been injuring itself there uh, and again as, as you'd mentioned we watched they uh, you know they're trying to keep the animal calm they put a bag over its head but the, the, the deer's thrashing and I'm sure that right now vets and animal control are making sure the deer's okay as, as they look to potentially release it soon absolutely and, and just again uh, I, I can't say enough about the rescuers uh, you know, they're, they're, they didn't, they, they were very calm. They went about it. You can tell that they practiced this before because in the Northeast, Mike, you know, when I was in D.C., we used to practice cold water rescues all the time out on the Potomac, uh, you know, in the, in, the Potom in the Washington Channel area, right off of where our Harbor Patrol was. And you know that up in the Northeast, they do this all the time. They practice. As soon as they have a little bit of ice, they'll be out there practicing. Because back in my fire, volunteer fire department in Fairfax County, Virginia, we would do the same thing. As soon as that water froze, we'd be out there practicing because we knew that we were going to have to go out there and most likely rescue a, a skater or some child that had ventured onto the ice and had fallen through. So these folks up there, they do a great job each and every day, and we see just another bit of what their capabilities are with the Waltham Fire Department. And talk about how dangerous this is. And they're going to, again, let's keep in mind, they're going to have to do this again. There's another deer out there. What are the danger points? Number one has to be if that ice breaks and now you're dealing, you're in water and you're trying to deal with the deer who's stressed and panicked and potentially thrashing around. Exactly. Again. And, you know, we heard the, the temperature, 36 degrees. It's above freezing. So what does that mean? You're talking about environmental environmental factors that are of the, of the air temperature with the frozen water and then the water underneath of the of the ice and uh, maybe melt a little bit of melting going on here so that makes it if they with the bright sunshine and uh, you know where it's one o'clock in the afternoon that makes it uh, even more dangerous because the temperature has gone above freezing all right again uh, just to reset the dial here we've been covering this for better part of an hour now two deer stuck on the ice. This is Waltham, Massachusetts. We have had the pleasure to watch one deer, an incredible rescue, safe and sound. There's another deer out there. So uh, we're going to continue to monitor what's going on here. And Mike, you and I had a chance to take a look at a, at a really heartwarming scene. All the cars lined up near this site right here. People showing the interest, the media there. We're now invested as we're showing and seeing just incredible compassion uh, for two animals that basically st stuck on the ice out there. 